Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am gonna be talking very quietly in this video because my son is napping and he keeps waking up. Um, but I really wanna get this done before his nap time is over. A few housekeeping items. I just wanted to let you know, I mentioned this last week, but I have a website. I have an official website, miahemstad.com. I'll link it below. I'm super excited about it. Uh, just a place for me to be able to communicate with you all more. If you go to the website on the homepage, there's a button called join the community, and that's how you can join my email list. I'll be sending out weekly emails with resource recommendations from all the different things I consume about mindfulness and mental health, podcasts, videos, books, you name it, along with printables with journal prompts that help you do some self-reflection and some inner work. I really do think that taking the time to get to know yourself is a huge, huge benefit to healing and mental wellness, mental well-being, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, I can go on forever. Join my email list if you want to be on that train. And then other than that, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Without further ado, let's dive in. So today we're going to be talking about something that I'm so glad I figured out what it's called. It's one of those things that I have kind of started to learn over the recent years and months, but finally know that it has a name. So this is called learned helplessness. Maybe Maybe some of you have heard of it. Um, it's something that's been studied a lot by psychologists. A good anecdote for you is basically at this zoo, there was a lion or a tiger, I don't remember which one, and they had this tiger, let's just go with lion, they had this lion in a 10 foot by 10 foot enclosure while they were building out her bigger habitat, her bigger, more beautiful enclosure. She lived in that 10 foot by 10 foot enclosure, I don't know, maybe a month or two, and then when her new enclosure was created, they moved her to the bigger enclosure with water and trees and vegetation and it was gorgeous. But they noticed that no matter what they tried to do, she wouldn't leave 10 foot by 10 foot of space in that new enclosure. She wouldn't venture outside of the amount of space that she'd been given from when she was young. So several studies were done to delve deeper into this topic and they realize, or this behavior, and they realize that this is something that affects humans and animals and it's called learned helplessness. It basically means that if you've gone through an experience or are, were in a circumstance for a given period of time, that your brain starts to think that that's it. Like that's all there is, then that's it. A good example of this would be if you grew up in an abusive household or something traumatic happened to you, even once you're removed from that situation, you still feel traumatized or you still feel um, hurt, wounded, or, you know, crippled by that situation. You know, PTSD is a good example. You know, someone's out in war and then they come home and they still feel that same paranoia, that same fear that they have to watch their backs. That is a type of learned helplessness. Another example of this is if you were called fat or ugly or something horrible when you were young and then you grow up and even though you might even be underweight, you could still think that you're fat because you were told that so many times by bullies at school or whatever. That's my son, he's waking up. But it's the same concept. I know for me, because a lot of learned helplessness is not something that we can just see right away, it takes a lot of like journaling, reflection, a lot of inner work, and to be quite honest with you, a lot of my, I thought I was self-aware, but when I started going to therapy, there was so much more I wasn't aware of that my therapist was helping me uncover. So whether or not you have a therapist, I hope this video serves that purpose for you to just ask you to take some time this week to sit down and figure out what are the lies I tell myself? Do I tell myself I'm fat? Do I tell myself I'm ugly? Do I tell myself I'm not capable? Do I tell myself I'm a bad person? Do I walk around feeling paranoia because something bad happened to me 10 years ago and I think it's just gonna keep happening to me? What are you carrying around inside of you that's hurting you, slowing you down, holding you back, debilitating you, making you scared, making it hard to sleep at night? Again, you know, inner work, asking these questions, listing them out one by one, and then uprooting those lies and uprooting those things, it's a painful, well, it's not always painful, but it's it's hard to let go of things that we've been holding on to for a long time, and it does take practice. And I want you to know that if you suffer significantly from something traumatic, for example, if you, you have trouble sleeping because you were abused or something like that, um, you definitely are gonna wanna get professional help. You know, identifying, well, I know I have trouble sleeping because I was abused. 
yes, that's important, that awareness is important, but in order to really overcome that, those night terrors and carrying around that burden of fear all the time, you're gonna have to go to a professional, I would recommend. That's why I go to a therapist and it's been hugely helpful for me. But I do think on the surface level, there's a lot that we can do to help ourselves just by doing inner work every day and practicing, especially when it comes to body image issues. To give you an example, in my life, um, when I was in high school, and even in middle school, I was told things like, your boobs are non-existent, your butt's too big, your teeth are crooked, oh my gosh, you need braces, your hair is crazy, guys, the list goes on. <laughs> and I never really, you know, when we're little kids, we don't have body image issues. It isn't until like somebody says something like that that we're like, oh my gosh, maybe they're right. Maybe my teeth are ugly. And like, I went years not wanting to smile. I thought I was hideous and I'm, I'm still struggling with things about my body, of course, like we all are, but like I'm way more accepting. It's hard though with pregnancy and stuff like, cause your body changes so much in such a short amount of time. But again, it takes daily practice. And once I identified all these things that I thought about my body and I asked myself, where did that crap come from? And I realized, oh, it was that person back in this grade. And it was this person who's related to me. And it was that person who said it. And who are they to tell me what is good and not good about my body? Who are they to judge my body and tell me what's pretty and what's ugly? They, they, they have no right or business doing that. And they're probably just as insecure or more insecure about themselves. And that's why they're taking their crap out on me and stuff like that. And so once I identified where those beliefs came from, cause I always thought that I just thought those things about myself, right? No, actually I never thought those things about myself until someone said it. And once I identified the memory, I was able to go back to that memory and go, they were wrong. They were so wrong to say those things. That's not true. Like there's nothing wrong with my body and I have to practice it, you know, pretty consistently, but I have been able to accept my smile the way it is, accept my curves the way they are, accept my hair the way it is, as crazy as it can be, accept my skin, even though I have a pimple the size of Saturn, like right there. <laughs> it's fine to be different and unique, and those people, they just, they must have been having a bad day and just wanted to be mean and nasty. So. I'm sharing that personal anecdote with you because I do think there is a lot that we can uproot when it comes to lies that we tell ourselves, when it comes to things that we've taught ourselves or we've been taught like, um, oh, you can never um, run that marathon because you never could before and so why can you now? Just because you might have failed to run 26 miles before doesn't mean you can't get up and try again, right? Like don't let past experiences and circumstances dictate how you're living today. That's learned helplessness. That's lies that you're telling yourself, that your brain is telling you because it was this way before, it's this way now. And that's just not the case. Things change, people change, you change. And it's so important to take the time. I know life can be crazy and in the whirlwind of life, it's hard to, to slow down and realize, oh wait, like we're not in 2006 anymore. I'm different, things are different. I live in a new city or whatever it is. You know, for a long time I didn't have a driver's license and even after having it, I still thought I can't go anywhere. I can't take myself anywhere. I'm reliant on other people to take me places. Even after I had a license and a car, guys, it takes so much to rewire our brains. When we go through a certain experience over and over and over again, we start to think that that's it and I will always be that way and that's not true. Life is always evolving, life is always changing. So I encourage you to take the time to sit down, get to know yourself, what are your limiting beliefs, what are the lies you tell yourself, where are the areas in your life where you've learned helplessness and uproot them one by one. It's a lot of work, but it's so worth it, guys. And if you, again, suffer from something even more significant like trauma or abuse, I highly recommend that in addition to journaling and getting to know yourself and learning what happened and how you're still living that way under that fear, under those issues, um, that you seek professional advice, whether it be from a psychiatrist, a counselor, a psychologist, a therapist, whatever it may be, I highly encourage you to do it. I've been going to therapy for a while now and it's been so helpful. So that's all I have for you. I'm sorry that I kept going all over the place. My son kept waking up, but guys, I'm a mom. That's kind of the way it is. And I still appreciate that you come and you watch my videos. I hope you're getting something out of it. And yeah, that's all I have to say. I'll see you in my next video. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.